Okay, moving on to starts. Now, starts are a very, very individual thing. If you'd care to look at any international race and look at the starting positions of the eight combatants, we'll call them in the water, you'll notice that invariably there's eight different techniques for setting up. I believe it's very important that you experiment a lot and to find the position that suits you the most. Six backstrokers on the national team in the last few years and not one of them started the same way. So I think it's something you really have to spend a bit of time on. They have to be feel comfortable, relaxed, but in a powerful position to allow them to execute the skill. And it might take quite a while. I believe that probably it's one of the things that takes longest in anything to learn to do a good backstroke start. It's certainly a lot easier to learn the stroke than it is to learn how to start correctly. So my advice on this one was to, to look at what people do at the highest level of competition, look at the different varieties across the board there, and then experiment with those with your swimmer until you find that one that suits them. Remember what it is, it's comfortable, relaxed, yet in a powerful position to initiate the dive. Right, moving on to the, the backstroke turn. Probably the most crucial part of the backstroke turn is to maintain momentum to the wall. One of the mistakes occur on the second last stroke, rotating into the, the turn, that that stroke becomes an ineffective stroke. That second last stroke, the last stroke that you're swimming, where you're actually swimming on your side, it's crucial that you engage and connect the water well so that stroke is still a swimming stroke and not just a stroke allowing you to rotate onto your front. Probably the most important thing about doing the turn approach. You must remember that to keep the momentum traveling towards the wall, you cannot change your stroke rate. You can't slow down and set yourself up for the turn. You have to condition yourself and train yourself to maintain the stroke rate, yet hold the water, again, particularly on that second last stroke, and then coming over for the last stroke, then from the last stroke, it's its hand in, head and hand going together as a freestyle turn would be. Now the rules are now, of course, changed where you can continue kicking, and I'd suggest that you continue kicking vigorously until you execute a dolphin kick to flip your feet over. Make sure you tuck your head in really tight. And remember that small arc, same as a freestyle turn, will be more effective. So just again, momentum into the wall, no loss of momentum. Watch that second last stroke to make sure it stays down the body center line as you're rotating, not slipping out to the side, either side, so that you can move quickly onto the wall. Going into now backstroke finishes. Again, very similar to the turns, very important that length of stroke, stroke rate is maintained, primarily length of stroke. When you're coming into the finish, make sure you hold your length, make sure your kick stays vigorous. As the last stroke that you're going to touch the wall, it doesn't recover as a backstroke stroke. You'll pick your wrist up as you're going to do a normal stroke, and then bring your hand, bend your elbow and bring your hand and point your fingers back at the wall and lunge at the same time you lunge, throw your head back, dolphin kick and hit the wall. So you're shortening by not completing the complete arc of your backstroke stroke, you're shortening the distance from that arm recovering straight back at the wall. You're taking the arc out of the stroke. Again, this is something that you need to practice quite a lot. Um, most of the swimmers, including some of my older ones still, haven't quite got this down to the level that I'd want them to achieve. 